all right so good day guys and welcome back to the formula sports channel and as always you guys know the support is very much appreciated thanks for being here in this video we're talking about the jamaica u17 team they are going to be in action in some friendlies in some upcoming friendly games and we're also going to be talking about the u18s that were recently in action very recently in action in the uefa friendship tournament is the name of the tournament so you know this video is going to be touching on the, the the young reggae boys the u17s and the u18s it's going to be talking about the, the young reggae boys anyways um u17s first u17s national team first um so they're going to be playing some upcoming friendlies against trinidad and tobago ladies and gentlemen it's a good look you know it's a good look this is the sort of preparation that we're talking about you know i mean we, 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 we beat the JFF a lot, but when them do good things, you know, we have to give them them props, big and serious. We have to give them them credit where credit is due. I'm a fair man. At least I try to be, or I think I am. Anyways, so it's a good look. The, the, <laughs> the only thing with that, with that, with that, with that, with them two friendly. I don't know how many of you guys realize in recent times that we seem to be forming some sort of a partnership with Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of international friendlies in, 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 in the last year or so, year, year and a half, a lot of international friendlies with Trinidad and Tobago, you know, preparation sort of a games and games to, to keep the various national teams sharp or to, to take a look at new talent. Um, yo, JFF, JFF, JFF need for members say we're not really too like Trinidad, you know. I mean, I think J JFF look like them forget say yo in a footballing terms, Trinidad. Trinidad are the, 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 the nemesis, you know. They are the enemy, you know, the Caribbean enemy, you know. JFF, don't forget that, you know. Don't get too cozy with Trinidad, you know. In footballing terms, we're not really like Trinidad, see? But to be fair, is a is fun and joke aside, is a is a good look. You know, is a good look. You know, really. It's, it's it's only in recent times we really see f a lot of international, not friendlies, but international friendly games for youth teams, especially, you know, this far out from the tournament. You know, the U17 tournament is, is some time away, you know, and, and for us to, to be preparing in this manner so early is, is, is you know, bravo, bravo. You know, we have to give props where props is due. You know, we have seen training sessions with the U17 teams, you know, with the U17 team just in recent times as well. Um, very recent times, the head coach of the U17 team, Altiman Freddy Butler, former um, reggae boy, was in the US looking. We saw the pictures coming out of the US. Um, him and um, Prezi was there as well, Michael Ricketts, you know, checking out some, some talents eligible for the u17 national team you know normally see them things especially i mean recently some of these things are a recent phenomenon but especially so far out from the from the tournament when other lies are good look so the the, the u17s preparing for these tournaments for, for these upcoming tournaments and and you know engaging in friendlies and training sessions and you know the head coach the head coach and coaching staff are, are scouting players. Let me remove the, the, the banner. So it's a good look. Um, Jamaica's under-17 team will engage their Trinidad, will engage rather their counterparts from Trinidad and Tobago in two international friendly games in Jamaica this weekend. The visitors arrive in the island this Wednesday and will play their first game at the UAE Captain Horace Burrell Center on Friday at 4 p.m. The second encounter will take place on Sunday at 9 a.m. The visitors will then play a club team on Tuesday before heading home the following day. Both aggregations are preparing for the CONCACAF Championship, which will take place in 2025. Coach of the Jamaica team is former reggae boy midfielder Altiman Freddy Butler, assisted by Carlton Simmons and Vassar Reynolds. So yes, you see it on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. Friday, May 3rd at 4 p.m. is the first game, and the second game is Sunday, May 5th at 9 a.m. at the Captain Horace Burrell Center. So it's a good scene. 
up next the U18s in the in the UEFA friendship tournament you know they were invited to this tournament over in Turkey and uh, a, a, a mixed bag of results I must say by the way I have been reliably informed that the, the last game was against Ecuador you know there was some un, 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 uncertainty I even saw military Guna's video and he was unsure as to whether or not if it was the, the Ecuador game was the last game there's not a lot of information on this tournament not a lot very scarce you know you dig down the internet you can't really find nothing no, no, no. Probably my research skills need to improve. But yeah. So yeah, I I would have received word. You know, uh, I, I asked somebody, and you know, this person is not known to talk foolishness. So you know, and they were reliably informing me that it it was the last game. So and and it it ended positively, a two one victory over Ecuador. So all right, let me let me give you the results for those who haven't been following. The first game was against Saudi Arabia. We lost it 2-1. The second game against Turkey, they say it ended in a 10-1 defeat. People, let me see a picture with, with scoreboard. Ladies and gentlemen, yo, people, I swear, that, that result, they never happened. You know? <laughs> yo, that result, they never happened. I swear, it never happened. People, the scoreboard malfunction. Seeing that is the story, People, that is the story I was sticking to. Zin, the scoreboard malfunction. That 10-1, that score, that picture with the 10-1 on the scoreboard, I will say, <laughs> that never really happened. Zin, I re people, I refuse to believe that a national team can see the 10 goals in a game. Anytime anything like that go on, I just dismiss it immediately. So this the second game, they, they claim it ended 10-1. I mean, I believe that. <laughs> The third game was against Mali. It we, we lost it two one as well, but the fourth game against Ecuador we won it two one. So a kind of mixed bag of of results. For starters, to be honest with you, I don't usually like commenting on things like this because I never seen none of the game. Them didn't see any of the games. I don't know if you guys saw any of the games. Me hear nobody will see any of the games apart from people who were there you know the, the games were not accessible the information is not accessible on this tournament but from a result standpoint we had three losses one big loss and a win and from from my understanding according to military guna big up mg orion watson was our leading goal scorer with three goals the former u17 um national striker um which high school in play for again glenn muir i think um orion watson did go going off memory so yeah i stand corrected but yeah man if memory serves that glenn Moore, I remember watching him playing for glenn muir in, in school by football so yeah a kind of mixed bag of results barring the 10-1 the, the the result the results were a little bit closer than i thought they would have been because it's it's mostly a local contingent from my understanding of it so barring the annihilation from Turkey, the results were pretty close. You know, a mixed bag of results, one terrible loss, you know, two close losses, and then a, a, a victory. You know, we, we seem to, to get better as the tournament progressed. MG was also saying as well that the Mali game, from the reports he was receiving, was our best game in terms of how the boys played. So, yeah. We, we kind of got a little bit better. I mean, we, we, you know, as the tournament progressed, eventually we ended it in a, in a victory, which is a good look and a big morale and confidence boost for those youngsters who have ended the tournament on a positive note, especially after the Turkey annihilation. Very good experience of these young crop of players. You know, very good experience. Good experience. They, they can only learn from this. Them live and them learn, you know, international exposure. Which is good for 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 the, the local contingent. Um, the, the, most of them wouldn't have much international expo football exposure, so that's good. Them live and them learn, and you know they will improve and, and and get better. And again, at least them get that big confidence boost in the end with a two one victory. So you know, and, and the, the coaching staff, you know, would 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 you know learn a, a thing or two from this tournament as well. So you know, um. I say young, well, he's a young, young in terms of coaching, from a coaching standpoint, young, 
Rudolph Austin is, is a part of the coaching setup as well. So, you know, we live and we learn, and I'm sure this was was great experience for these youngsters over there in 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 Turkey. And it's it's it, that that Ecuador result, I'm sure, would have would have been a massive boost for them, and and I think would have been very much needed, you know, given the the, the string of losses and that you know Turkey annihilation that did not happen. <laughs> Seeing. So anyways, you know, young reggae boys in, 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 a, in a lot of action in recent times, a lot of activities surrounding the, the, the youth teams, the men's youth teams. We'll just start that with update you guys in a video. Knock up the likes button, subscribe and share and hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Take care, guys. Stay safe and until next time.